All right. I decided to call this one um, Foggy Wheat. I was going to go with something cool like filled of gold and that, but my resin technique didn't pan out, so it didn't deserve such an awesome title. So this is a birch wood uh, log that I had. I had a favorite tree of ours die in our yard last year and cut it down and saving pieces of it. I love the white bark on it and the, and the wood grain itself is pretty awesome. Um, as you'll see by the end, I've managed to destroy all of the bark, uh, at least the white part of the grain, um, and it left some of the underlying colors, which is pretty cool, but I didn't really figure on the resin sticking to the entire thing and having to remove all of the bark to get rid of it, so, oh well, you live and you learn. I started doing the wood turning about a year ago and the reason you're seeing my um, attempts at making different projects is to help ready, raise money for Operation Underground Railroad. These guys go around the world fighting child sex trafficking and I thought I'd like to do something with my free time and my hobbies and raise some money. If you subscribe to this channel and do a paid subscription, um, you get a discount on any projects you see that you, you want to buy. But more importantly, the money, whether it's a couple bucks a month or five bucks a month, goes directly to Operation Underground Railroad. I don't take a cent. Uh, everything I do, all the materials and time is donated. Um, I'm having a party doing this stuff, so for me it's just fun. Um, but if you like what you're seeing and you'd like to support what I'm doing, your paid subscription would be fantastic. I've added a few things as well. I'm now a Amazon uh, associate uh, where if you see the links in the description of the videos, you can click on them, do some shopping, and there's a small percentage of everything you purchase that goes to me, which of course I donate right to Operation Underground Railroad. You can also grab a t-shirt uh, from Operation Underground Railroad or a hoodie. The profits that go from that are, are also donated. So take a look at the video description. So I really like using this Roto Zip. Um, it's kind of a freehand tool that lets you carve out just about whatever you want. This oscillating saw uh, is also fantastic. I kind of go back and forth between them. The oscillating saw vibrates my hand so much that I pretty much go numb. The roto zip sometimes is too powerful, kind of climbs up the log or the wood you're working on. So I kind of split my time between both and get the job done. Uh, you'll see links to the where you can buy these on Amazon. They've been good tools for roughing out bigger carving type projects. I had this idea a while back. I love the image of wheat in bundles. And I thought, how can we use this to, how, how can we use a bowl to highlight the, the beauty of wheat, you know, kind of the harvest thought. There's a lot of symbolism when you see the, the wheat. This is my wind sander, it's a file sander. I really love this thing, it helps you get in tight corners. Um, the sandpaper is quite cheap. Um, you'll see it come off a couple of times here, but it's it actually works out pretty well as long as you don't pinch it in the corner too much. This thing's just really well designed. I, I beat the crap out of it all the time. It never overheats. It just goes and goes and goes. And you can get all the different kinds of grits um, for fairly cheap. So I've been quite happy with this. I've, I'm always looking for better options for sanding and carving in tight corners. Uh, the more intricate my 
projects become. And I really like that between this and this oscillating saw, um, I've had some pretty good luck. Every time you watch one of my videos, it earns a small amount of money for Operation Gun Railroad. Um, so I certainly appreciate the, the shares, the recommendations to other people, um, and the time spent. I've been absolutely shocked by the amount of support I've received. Uh, I love doing this stuff anyway, but I love the support I receive for my projects and for the charity I'm trying to support. I use a lot of hot glue. It, you know, it, it cures really fast. When you need to keep something in place, it really helps, uh, especially when you're doing something tedious like trying to get flowers or uh, wheat stalks to stay pl stay in place. I just turned 40, and it's pretty humbling to see the top of my head getting a little gray there, or a lot gray, as my kids would say. One thing's for sure, every time I do one of these projects, it turns out different than I expected. Um, my goal, like I said at the beginning, was to keep the bark intact, at least to a large portion of it. So I had this vision, but um, you can't fill the whole thing with resin and not end up having to get rid of parts of it. So here's one problem I'm trying to solve, it's how to keep how to, how to save resin, how to keep from wasting a ton of it, um, how to keep the mold, the makeshift molds I'm using from sticking, and and so on. So I, on previous projects with the vine bowl I did, I used saran wrap, and the problem is, is you pull that tight and it kind of pulls into the holes a little bit, so you end up having to turn a lot of wood and resin off of there to get rid of it. So I'm thinking this time, let's do cardboard. It should keep its shape a lot better. And as long as you, in this case, in the middle, stuff it full of a uh, leak-proof bag, uh, that should keep, you know, I save myself gallons of resin from having to fill in the middle that I'm just gonna turn out anyway. This is me trying to duct tape my tenon so when I turn it, I don't have to reform it. This totally failed. Uh, afterwards, it, the resin leaked all through the duct tape. I need to use a stronger type of duct tape. But the cardboard idea worked great. It kept uh, kept the plastic from pulling in. Didn't lose too much of what I was trying to do. Um, I have some silicone uh, mold release that I totally forgot to spray on there. I wasn't sure what it would do with cardboard anyway. But So here I am learning another lesson about epoxy, and that is this quick set stuff may not be the right answer. Um, I've tried all kinds of different epoxies, and frankly, I've just been doing whatever's cheapest. But the quick set stuff does not allow the bubbles to dissipate fast enough before it hardens. Even with the pressure pot, it's just too fast. And so you'll see towards the end here, I had actually ended up doing two pours. You don't see the second one, but on the first one, it ended up a bit more cloudy than I wanted. Second was crystal clear, but... Um, you know, I, I had let the thing, the bubbles rise and did a few things to try to get rid of as more bubbles and that worked out great. But, um, you know, things never ever work out exactly like I want and lesson learned kind of turned out cool. Um, in the end, I've didn't, I was really dissatisfied at first and then it's really grown on me. And uh, maybe we'll give it another shot another time with a different resin, but so far, uh, Lesson 472 learned about how to use resin appropriately. You probably noticed there I had to chisel away my tenon, which really disrupted it. And I fought keeping this thing center on the, on the lathe the whole dang time. One thing I've learned is that if you can save your tenon or leave the faceplate screwed onto your project when you're doing a bunch of resin, uh, if you can get it back on the lathe perfectly centered, you'll save yourself from having to recut a lot of the material off. Uh, so I'm kind of 
trying to figure out how to do that best. Um, I liked this idea a little bit better than putting my faceplate in resin and ruining it. <laughs> so, I don't know. i got to find some tape that won't leak, apparently. As always, I appreciate people's feedback. Um, I'm a total novice at this stuff. Having a lot of fun doing it. This is my therapy. I'm a full-time foot and ankle surgeon, and uh, I do this for charity and for fun. So if you're seeing me doing something that's totally ridiculous that I should know better, let me know. Uh, this lathe is my second lathe. I had a wen lathe to begin with. It was fine until I pushed it to its limits with some really heavy logs and totally destroyed it. Um, this is the L Laguna 18 1836 Revo. Um, and it's a workhorse. It's awesome. I haven't had a problem with this yet. I had a huge chip right there. So I've, I've learned to use this um, uh, thin uh, super glue. And I, I like to fill little things like that, either with resin. In this case, I didn't want a resin look, so I filled it with sawdust and the glue, and it, it helped out. In the end, you can hardly tell it was there. But it sets up really fast, so I love that glue. That you don't have to wait around all day for it to set up. So as you saw before, I filled the inside, lined it with cardboard so it wouldn't cave into the, the windows where I put the wheat. Uh, and then I, I put a garbage bag inside that, a new one, so it wouldn't leak. And then I filled that with just a bunch of uh, old plastic bags that I reuse over and over again. So try not to waste too much stuff here. And it probably saved me from filling up the center of that thing with a gallon or two of resin. This thing's pretty big. Um, I didn't measure it yet, but I think it's about 16 inches tall, 10 inches wide. So I could have filled a lot of resin in there and wasted it. So again, should have sprayed the outside of my cardboard um, mold with some quick release. Otherwise, you end up having to chisel it out like this. I may have to try something different, but you certainly have to build your molds with custom molds with this kind of project because I have done a bowl and a bowl technique, but in this case, you're never going to find a bowl that fits that exactly. And um, I need to figure out how to do custom molds for my resin a little faster, a little more efficiently. Uh, I spent forever chiseling this out of the middle, turning it until it looked better. Big shout out to the folks over at Woodcraft. We've got one in here in Utah. I know there's some all around the country. Uh, those guys are awesome. They've got everything you need for wood turning, resin, tools, um, they're not supporters of my channel necessarily, but they've done a, a great job. I did just receive a sponsorship from, um, totalboat.com. That's T-O-T-A-L-B-O-A-T. -O -O I just got their resin in the mail that they've donated to my project. Um, haven't used it yet on a project. I, I got it after I had poured this one. Uh, but I can't wait to use it. It's a deep set, slower, slower setting um, epoxy that's designed for thicker projects, up to two inches, I believe, is what I read. And so I'm excited to try that. I'll see if I have better luck than I did with this resin. Again, anything I receive, any sponsorships I receive this crazy hobby of mine, uh, I donate to Operation Underground Railroad. <clears throat> My uh, most popular video so far is the Autumn Windows bowl I did with some maple leaves and windows kind of like this one and I got a lot of grief from people for not sanding it to within an inch of its life uh, and leaving some marks so I was determined on this one to get it perfect and uh, 
probably set my expectations too high, but, you know, I worked my way from 40 grit all the way up to, I think it was 1500 grit, and then I broke out the wet sanding grit system, which takes it even higher, I think, I can't remember, I think it maxes out about 6,000 grit, and you still see some lines, I just need to be more patient, but, uh, clear resin is one hard thing to sand to perfection, it just leaves so much to leaves so many marks and any any little tiny imperfection shows up real fast if you look inside the bowl here you can see deep in there there's some really dark lines and I got this thing sanded perfectly and then I realized ah man it just doesn't look good the resin had kind of seeped into the softer wood there and so I had to turn it out again and sand it and got it to at least a better looking uh, appearance If you look close, you can see some worm, worm marks in the wood. I kind of love the defects of wood. I like the cracks filled with resin. I like bark uh, partially on. Um, some people, their goal is to get the uh, perfect piece of wood without blemish. And I think that's great. But personally, I like seeing the crazy defects. So you can see the two different pores here. One was totally perfect. The other one was totally cloudy. I just didn't do enough work to get rid of the bubbles on that first one. Um, and again, it was a quick set, not meant for what I was doing once I read the label more closely. And yeah, one of these days I'll figure this whole thing out. But I was quite pleased with how this turned out. I like the teak oil. It rarely streaks. It doesn't leave marks. And it soaks into the wood deeply and protects it, keeps it from cracking. Um easy to maintain and after a couple of coats it really shines so I've kind of stuck with that lately the folks over at Total Boat did send me some uh, glossy epoxy finish so I'm going to try that on my next project and see what how that looks but I've done teak oil in the last 10-15 projects and I really liked it in the end this kind of looks like a some kind of beer commercial. Some uh, Several people kept commenting that it looks like it would be a great uh, dispenser handle or something like that for a bar. I don't know. Kind of a clever idea. But when my wife and I got married, we one of our songs we danced to at our wedding was Sting's uh, Fills of Gold. And I was trying to honor that. And wasn't too happy with how it handled, so I named this one Foggy Wheat. I'm going to try to do that sweet memory of ours a little better justice next time. <laughs> but, again, this is definitely not what I was going for, but it's kind of grown on me. I, it's got a cool look to it. I love the translucent look. I'll probably start making lamps in the future to put some lights in these somehow. Maybe some of those mi micro-LED lights. Once again, I really support you guys' I'm sorry, I, I really appreciate the support you guys show my channel and my projects. I'm obviously a novice at what I'm doing. Um, I look around, like, around YouTube and see some amazing stuff and uh, learn a lot from a lot of people. And Hopefully I can inspire people to donate, help save kids from sex trafficking. Our channel and the products we've, I've made and sold, I think we're, we're getting real close to about 10000 bucks for the year which I'm super excited about. Um, channels reached several hundred thousand people. And I think our 
total viewing minutes right now is getting close to 2 million, which blows my mind. I never thought we'd get that kind of exposure, but my goal is twofold. Raise awareness for this uh, fight against child sex trafficking and raise money to help fight it. And uh, I've been very happy with how things have turned out so far. Again, your paid subscription to the channel um, is a, you know, you get charged once a month, a couple bucks. Uh, sign up, it all goes to them. If you go to ourrescue.org, O U R R E S C U E dot O U R G, um, and look up Dan Priest fundraiser, you'll see my fundraiser. And uh, not all the money we've raised is there, but most of it is. Um, We've donated a number of projects that have been sold at art fairs and things and donated different ways, but it's been awesome to raise this money and help uh, with this fight this horrific problem we have in our world.